If you were helping to plan some big project and you were sitting in a big meeting and all you ever said was, that won't work, I don't like that, without ever offering alternatives or suggestions, sooner or later, you'd be asked to leave. But movie critics do that all the time. So in the spirit of constructive criticism, here's what didn't work for me in the anime film Princess Arite and what I'd do to change it. Before we go any further, two things. One, this video will contain spoilers. And two, I do love this film. I'm just talking about what didn't work for me and how I change it for me. There are actually only two things I'd change. One major and one almost trivial. Let's start with the trivial one first because it happens near the beginning. I couldn't help but be creeped out by the grown men creeping into a preteen girl's bedroom to woo her. I'd actually change that by introducing a Japanese tradition. It was common in feudal Japan for suitors of girls to sneak into their bedroom at night and see how they reacted. If they screamed, their entire family would come running. But if they just stayed quiet, then the person knew that there was some interest there. So I add a scene very early in the film between Arite and one of her serving girls. I'd have the servant remind Arite to start expecting suitors at night soon and have Arite express annoyance, understanding that this is the custom. She'd even roll her eyes and say how silly it is that the guards would pretend not to notice these men sneaking into the princess's chamber at night. And especially because all they would do is say a few pretty words and leave some silly gift and then leave. This both tells us more about Arite's character, that she's logical and unromantic, and it further assures us that nothing creepy is going to happen. The scenes with the suitors can continue as before, although I'd make Arite a fraction less shy because she's expecting these visits now. So that would resolve that for me. Let's move on to the larger issue, and that is the pacing of the film. Now, this film has drawn complaints for being slow, but I actually like the languorous pacing of the individual shots in Princess Arite. It gives you a chance to really soak in the atmosphere and pay attention to the details of the backgrounds and the locations. Also, let's be honest, kids could use with a slightly less frenetic environment these days. My problem lies with the middle of the film. Princess Arite neatly divides into a three-act structure. The first act ends when the wizard casts the spell on Arite, making her passive, and the second act ends when Arite breaks that spell, making her active. Unfortunately, the middle act involves a lot of... waiting. The first act is engaging as you're introduced to the setting and the characters, and the last act has plenty of action and momentum. But in the middle, the wizard is waiting for others to arrive, and Arite is basically waiting to be rescued. As a result, the movie drags. The only active character in that second act is Ample, the girl from the village. And I think she's the key to adding some dynamism to the second act. I'd show Ample, the first night we see her, take a detour on her way home and look in on this new arrival, then I'd have her get lost in the bowels of the castle and come across the magic fountain. Now, she wouldn't have to figure out how it works. All she'd have to do is realize that the water is coming from a standalone artifact and not through the wizard's will. I'd then show her returning to her village and telling the other villagers about what we found. Now, the focus would shift to the villagers. I'd have some scrappy young man in the village argue that now is their time to strike back against the wizard. They can try to rescue Princess Arite as a distraction while the other villagers attack the wizard and try to overpower him. Now, some villagers would be against this, but some would sign on for this plan. That night, the villagers would execute this plan, rescuing Princess Arite and finding her frustratingly passive. The villagers would then plead with her to be more active, which works into the themes of the film. It also provides an exciting dynamic climax to the second act. Then the plan would fail. The wizard would turn the rebelling villagers into frogs, recapture Arite, put her back into the dungeon, and the film would be at its darkest moment. 
The wizard would then be about to kill the villagers, but his toady would insist that they can't kill too many villagers or else they, can't, they won't make the food for the two of them. And so the wizard would grudgingly turn them back into uh, humans and just let them go, but with a warning this time. This would also be a clue about the limitations of the wizard's power, which, while I didn't mind how suddenly that's revealed at the end, I think it would benefit from a little bit more foreshadowing. Then the movie would continue as before, with the point of view shifted back to Arite as she breaks the spell and then becomes a more active character in the third act. The third act still works, even with everything we've changed. Arite is still the heroine because she's the one who figures out exactly how the magic fountain works, and she's the one who actually saves the villagers. And that's important. This is a film about Arite breaking out of her shell of her own will and saving other people. These changes, besides improving the pacing, also have the added benefit of showing that not just royalty have agency, but it still gives Arite her story arc and keeps her the heroine of the movie. And that's it. That's all I'd change. I love the character designs. I love the artwork. I love the visual design of the kingdoms and how the magic looks. Um, I like the plot. I like how things develop. All these various things about it. Those are just two things that kind of bug me and that I would like to see changed. How about you? What would you change?